Hey everybody, it's Jog, otherwise known as FBI's Most Annoying. Welcome back to another video from your boy Jake. This one isn't going to be anything too fancy, but since I'm trying to keep up with this triple C thick commie channel, I obviously also want to help reintroduce Marxist analysis and start with an attendance to some rather commonly misunderstood rhetoric, starting with something specific. Many terms, like communism and socialism, or figures like Stalin and Lenin, invoke particular imagery imprinted in Western and really American minds, thanks to rampant Red Scare propaganda. What was originally a legendary historical pursuit to build a better, brighter, stronger, more connected world is now warped behind a blinding veil that prevents all kinds of people in America from realizing their class conditions more clearly. Communism, socialism, communal living, mutual aid, even the details of policy involving national health care or social security, so much of social development and progress in its original form sought a collective betterment. That betterment, including what has been achieved and what hasn't, is the true essence of the aims in leftist thought. This is important to mention because leftist thinking in America has been so systematically attacked and villainized for decades even now with the resurgence in socialist political thought and the associated theories from Marx and other thinkers, common, mis common misconceptions can develop even in honest readings. One of the greater linguistic hiccups, in my opinion, is naming the proletarian state hegemony in contrast to its bourgeois state counterpart hegemony a dictatorship. While Lenin and other Marxist thinkers and writers and other left-leaning ideological movements and their figures with them too certainly couldn't predict the term dictatorship devolving into a different meaning than its original form, but it was nevertheless instead used by Western powers to, you know, both covert and overt, to initiate and perpetuate anti-communist political propaganda. I want to discuss actual theory in this video, starting with a juicy text in any inspiring, or aspiring rather, leftists should read. State and Revolution, one of Lenin's best works, quite literally begins its first chapter laying the contradictions of capitalism and its interaction with the state. In the initial discussion of Marxist studies, Lenin writes, On the one hand, the bourgeois, and particularly the petty bourgeois, ideologists compelled under the weight of indisputable historical facts to admit that the state only exists where there are class antagonisms and a struggle, correct Marx in such a way to make it appear that the state is an organ for the reconciliation of classes. According to Marx, the state could neither have arisen nor maintained itself, had it been possible to reconcile these classes. From what the petty bourgeois and philistine professors and publicists say, with fre quite frequent and benevolent references to Marx, it appears that the state does reconcile classes. But according to Marx, the state is an organ of class rule, an organ for the oppression of one class by another. It is the creation of order, which legalizes and perpetuates this oppression by moderating, moderating the conflict between classes. In the opinion of the petty bourgeois politicians, however, order means the reconciliation of classes and not oppression of one class by another. To alleviate the conflict means reconciling classes and not depriving the oppressed classes of de definite means and methods of struggle to overthrow the oppressors. In essence, Lenin lays out a ba the basic goals of the state and explains the logical error from pro-state apologists. He explains, as Marx explained, the state may seem as a way to reconcile class antagonisms. These uh, analyzed, albeit irreconcilable, differences between the rich and elite and the working masses, right? But the state o actually only develops because of bourgeois perpetual dictatorship. And this difference between the aims of the working class and the aims of the exploiter elites exists because the state functions to pursue total oppression, total dominance of its class over the other, of the capitalists over the workers. The best way to understand what Marx and mean by their usage of the term dictatorship is laid out only a few paragraphs down in the text, stating, the theory of class struggle applied by Marx to the question of the state and the socialist revolution leads as a matter of course to the recognition of the political rule of the proletariat, of its dictatorship, i.e. of undivided power directly backed by the armed force of the people. The overthrow of the bourgeois can be achieved only by the proletariat becoming the ruling class, capable of crushing the inevitable and desperate resistance of the bourgeois, and of organizing all the working and exploited people for the new economic system. This divide between the two main economic classes may appear to be some kind of tribalist or binary worldview, 
But as mentioned earlier, the existence of the state itself is proof of the irreconcilable differences. The bourgeois would need a totality of political power to oppress and control working masses if the divide could actually be ameliorated. What's most relevant here is noting that the description and analysis of class struggle using terms like dictatorship isn't some kind of red fash tanky nonsense. This isn't fascist anti-Semitic rants to be found along a long line of anti-Semitic rants from Hitler or his ill ilk, or even neoliberal or conservative nonsense. This is political science. This is class analysis. Let's make these terms a little more real, or this term rather, and a little more real in our understanding by citing our modern conditions and issues. Some examples of the behavior the bourgeois dictatorship commonly have, the illegal American invasion of the Middle East, uh, also known as West Asia, and the genocides regularly committed against its people, Iran, Iraq, Afghanistan, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Kuwait, and our other associated influences, including, you know, in involved in the destruction of that region. Uh, that's examples of the dictatorship of the bourgeois and its power, right? Male, uh, male American citizens of color, right? Black Americans, African Americans killed day after day from white supremacist police forces with no resistance or no, no, no accountability, no change, right? This is the dictatorship of the bourgeois, right? This mass atrocity. The threat of losing your job if you miss a day or two. The threat of homelessness if you miss your housing payments. Dictatorship of the bourgeoisie, the illusion of democracy and its theatrical performance of pseudo-bipartisanship as two capitalist parties act as a one-party state alternating between red and blue fascism. Dictatorship of the bourgeoisie. Bourgeois, boor, bourgeoisie. Maybe that's why I never landed in America because we just, we just, our fragile minds can't handle it, can't handle it. But, uh, you know, just just very bad joke, digression aside. An elite undercover ring of child trafficking run and owned by the most powerful and wealthiest in the world, used and abused by all kinds of people. Dictatorship of the, prolet of the not the proletariat, of the bourgeoisie. All right, these are all examples of and typicalities of what a bourgeois state dictatorship looks like, where when the means of production, when the way we run things isn't in the average person and the workers control these terrible things go on without any reconciliation evidently marx and communists alike see the dictatorship of the proletariat as a temporary force noting that it its necessary existence is not eternal lenin writes further down in the text Marx expressly emphasized the revolutionary and transient form of the state, which the proletariat needs. The proletariat needs the state only temporarily. We do not, after all, differ with the anarchists on the question of the abolition of the state as the aim. We maintain that to achieve this aim, we must temporarily make use of the instruments, resources, and methods of state power against the exploiters, just as the temporary dictatorship of the oppressed classes is necessary for the abolition of classes. This proletarian dictatorship is not some person running and controlling things all by themselves and their little council. It isn't ruthless authoritarianism in the way you think it is, where if you say no, then you die or something. I don't even know how this, like, boogeyman manifestation works in people's I mean, it's really thanks to American media, mostly. Um, like, you know, people are afraid of gulags, but, like, mass slavery in prison is happening right now in the so-called land of the free and there's not even any second thought there whatsoever. Point is, it's a misconception to think socialists and communists truly advocate for a dictatorship in the way that the average person in this country thinks it is. The term dictatorship in this context defines the totality of power of one class over another. This totality of power exists because it both serves the benefit of state bourgeois power, but also seeks to fully pacify worker resistance in the masses. You can see this phenomenon existing in one of the most potent forms. Cop City, near the majority black population in the beautiful city of Atlanta, totally not at all related to its existence. This is truly one of the sickest and uh, most concerning uh, instances of, of what American fascism truly looks like with at least one activist that we know of uh, has been killed, shot countless times. Um, it's just, it's, it's awful. It's, it's terrible what this, this policing force does to people all around the world.
to to socialists to lenin to marx to Engels, to communists and so many others state power consistently manifests as punishment against people merely seeking betterment and change in its traditional fashion and the way it's existed for history punishing people for giving food to the hungry or homeless because giving extra food doesn't reap a profit extra bank fees when your account is overdrawn these show what the people on top want the people who are allegedly below them to do they don't care about us all they want is money and power lenin goes on to describe how engels saw the state and how it can serve the proletariat he continues in state and revolution saying the proletariat seizes from state power and turns the means of production into state property to begin with but thereby it abolishes itself as the proletariat abolishes all class distinctions and class antagonisms and abolishes also the state as state Society thus far, operating amid class antagonisms, needed the state, that is, an organization of particular exploiting class, for the, main, for the maintenance of its external conditions of production, and therefore especially for the purpose of forcibly keeping the exploited class in the conditions of oppression, determined by the given mode of production, slavery, serfdom, bondage, wage, labor, whatever you want to call it, right? Uh, the state was the official representative of society as a whole, its concentration in a visible corporation. But it was only this insofar it was the state of that class which itself represented for its own time, society as a whole in ancient times, the state of slave-owning citizens, in the middle ages of the feudal nobility, in our own time the bourgeoisie. When at last it becomes the real representative of the whole society, it renders itself unnecessary, as soon as there is no longer any social class to be held in subjection, as soon as class rule and the individual struggle for existence based upon the present anarchy in, pre in production, with the collisions and excesses arising from this struggle, are removed. Nothing more remains to be held in subjection, nothing necessitating a special coercive force, a state. The first act by which the state really comes forward as the representative of the whole of society, the taking possession of the means of production in the name of society, is also its last independent act as a state. State interference in social relations becomes, in one domain after another, superfluous, and then dies down of itself. The government of persons is replaced by the administration of things, and by the conduct of processes of production. The state is not abolished, it withers away. What uh, Engels and Wrights and Lenin is commentating on here is the inherent nature of the state and the power of the proletariat. Since the state serves as the instrument of fascist, racist, sexist, imperial authoritarianism, and its existence, as defined earlier, perpetuates and manages the class antagonisms between the capitalist few and the working masses, Lenin and Engels note the utility and function of the state naturally deteriorates as the state and the power of all working people instead of our current bourgeois dictatorship naturally gives back its means of production to the people. Representatives and assemblies are voted for and held accountable by democratic centralism. Said elected officials can be recalled by vote at any time. Councils can form by and for anyone at any time. These are just tastes of a true democratic society that can be actualized if state power was in the hands of the people and not the richest of the richest. I think I'll do another video sometime about Cuba. Cuba does an ex a great job of laying out their democracy, but uh, you know, obviously that's for another day. Before I end the video, I'd like to point out that this is a group of people, that is Lenin and communists in Russia and, and in nations like China and Vietnam, who stood against Western state capitalist imperial powers, resisted, and in many ways succeeded, especially China and Vietnam, in the long run. Russia went from an underdeveloped feudal hellscape ruled by incestual monarchs and within less than half a century fully developed into a nation who could stand and defeat the nazi invasion developed a centralized and industrial and agricultural economy and still sent the brightest of the brightest engineers and scientists into space before the united states what an impressive and commendable legacy in my view just to, just to enumerate further one last time, Lenin displays his analysis once again with this quote I wanted to include it. But the revolution is through going. It is still journeying through purgatory. It does its worth methodically. And then further down in the text, he continues, The Communist Manifesto gives a general summary of history, which compels us to regard the state as the organ of class rule 
and leads us to the inevitable conclusion that the proletariat cannot overthrow the bourgeoisie without first winning political power, without attaining political supremacy, without transforming the state into the proletariat organized as the ruling class, and that this proletarian state will begin to wither away immediately after its victory because the state is unnecessary and it cannot exist in a society where there are no class antagonisms. Alright, I claim this one would be a little shorter, so this seems like a good stopping point. Hopefully I laid out the clarification on this term dictatorship and what it means in Marxist terminology. My aim is to give y'all more of a reason to check this stuff out, so please do. I'll link in the description where you can easily come across more of this stuff. Uh, thank you for watching very much if you made it this far. Feel free to let me know what you think in the comment section. Send a like and hit that subscribe button. Got more coming in, uh, in the future. But uh, nonetheless, take care. Thanks again. Hope everybody's well. Um, yeah. And uh, thank you to everyone who's uh, supported me so far. I really appreciate every person who comes to check this stuff out. So take it easy. Thank you. And uh, see you in the next one.